What's up, everyone? Welcome back to episode four of Five and Five. I'm back with Matt Dunn. We're fired up to break down a few clips from Maryland, Penn State. Matt, welcome back. Excited to get into it. Thanks, man. Me too. Let's get it rolling. Here so we go. On, this, on these first couple of clips, I really wanted to highlight Maryland's early offense and transition offense. One of the things that I think Maryland does such a good job of with their veteran savvy group is really probing and testing the waters. I think it's really key and you see it across these two clips for guys being active, having you know good posture and being threats and then ready to assess situations and make good decisions. They get one early after they get their subs on here after it caused turnover, they break out, they're looking for transition opportunities. Everyone's running up the field and then they're right into it. Pass down, pick down, they're looking, they're active, there's cutters. There's no hesitation and they're taking advantage of the shot clock. You know, now it's down to about 60 seconds. They're starting to get their subs off, but you have to stay on Jared Bernhardt, Wisnowskis. These guys are, continue to be threats in 4v4 situations, 5v5. And one of the things that we're going to talk about again in just early offense is just probing, looking for opportunities. And when you're playing with less numbers, slides become longer. Guys might fall down, guys might get caught ball watching, and there's just a lot of opportunity for high IQ players to take advantage in these unsettled situations. Yeah, no, I think those are great points, and we can even go back, you know, we can go back a little earlier here, and I really like the first possession, and we were just chatting on it. I mean, just the, you know, the body language from Maryland early in the shot clock here, like, they're, they're you can tell they're constantly testing the waters and and looking at guys kind of going full speed going towards the goal bouncing way heads up and you can see guys through the defense putting their stick up here where you can tell like early on like right here are guys cutting two guys cutting right here back pipe pushing there curling around burn kind of steps in and out like as a defense early on when you're by the way penn state's got five guys on here and maryland's got four so you're kind of thinking like it's easy to fall in the trap of like, there's no way they're going to go right now. It kind of puts you in your heels a little bit as a defense. And you're kind of like a little caught off guard. You might get a little frantic. And I honestly think that's what happens here. Yeah, I think, you know, there's just different opportunities. And now they're throwing it up. Subs are on, attacking the approach right away. And again, even this decision on the first dodge, there's been a lot of talk over the past couple of years. We use the term at Duke party starter. I think you guys might be using that a little bit on the whip snakes, but again, like, you know, the, the balance of taking the first dodge and shot um, in a settled possession is not an always an easy one to strike as an offensive player. You want to be aggressive, you want to attack, but you also want to get motion started. So here, I think this is Kyle Long. I really like how, again, he's being aggressive off of the first dodge. He runs by his guy, the slides hesitating, gets his stick back to the inside and sticks a great finish. Yeah, and that's kind of one of those things, right? Like, so Penn State finally gets their, their six guys on, so we're six on six. As the hot guy, you're kind of like, you know, he gets a little low here, right? So he makes a hard run. He's going against the pole, and it's early in the shot clock. So you're almost like, if you're not sure whether or not to slide, a part of you is saying like, you know, he, this is probably, he's probably just getting the ball the ball rolling here a little bit, that party started to feel. Um, so he is a he's a second late whereas you know i think if that's you know we got 40 seconds on the shot clock here if that's at 20 seconds on the shot clock this guy's probably like oh they got to go like i'm gonna slide i gotta be ready to slide but i think part of that early testing the waters thing is as a defense there's a subconscious piece of you that's like these guys they're i'm not like definitely going to slide here whereas low in the shot clock you're like they're about to go so i gotta be ready here you know i think that psychological piece definitely kind of plays in a little yeah, and then I think when you take it to this next clip, you know, as Maryland's working that early offense, you know, the D mids, the long stick, they sub off. They're looking for 6v5, 4v3. Nice, you know, cut there. Nothing's open, but then they keep going, right? They get into it. They draw a slide, they carry through X. Subs start to go off, one, two. Now it's four on four. Right. And again, two guys just happen to commit to the ball and they're able to make them pay, you know, great feed, great right. stick and poised by Bernhardt using that quarterback background. Again, you trust your, your veteran playmakers to, you know, take liberties in these situations. 
I mean, yeah, and Penn State has two guys to the ball there for, you know, a good 10 yards or so. Um, and so you can tell, and they're subbing off, so it's like a little chaotic. We get back to those analysis here, but Bernhard does it such a nice job multiple times using his speed and athleticism just to, like, push this corner early enough that he can commit this guy here and then still have time to bounce away and make that look, right? And that's hard as a defense because they never really get set. Um, and things are happening fast. Guys, you go from you have enough guys on, guys are subbing off. So are you helping Crease or Jason here? You can kind of see both guys drop down a little and pinch down. This guy kind of, you know, ideally there, you know, we talk about off-ball posture. Ideally, you don't get into a full sprint. You give like, you know, hip to ball, hip to man, two-step jab so you can see your man and get back more. But having to turn around like that and get lost, you know, at this level with players like this, all it takes is that one, you know, that one extra step. How, Matt, as a defensive player in these kind of in-between situations, you know, how does your communication change when you go from, you know, a subbing and a 6v6, 5v5 scenario to maybe having three or four guys on the field where slides become longer and it's more unsettled? Yeah, that's a good question. They're less, they're less structured. The things that matter more are, you know, you're not going to fall back on like a, you know, a game plan or like a slide recovery package in these scenarios. Whereas like six on six, like you scout the other team's offense, you know what offense they're going to run. You scout how your defense is going to run, how you slide recover. These are much more fluid. So the things that become more important is like concept of flowing with the ball and being in good posture, because you just have to be able to basically assess the threat level of the ball carrier versus the man you're covering and where you are on the field. And so I think generally speaking, in these unsettled scenarios, your help tends to become adjacent a little more. It's less, it's less black and white, it's like a full slide. It's more kind of like hedgy, like take up space. Um, usually don't have a crease presence established in time to go from the crease. And if you do, you don't have a good fill. So kind of it's like, can we buy some time? And if this guy can, you know, right here take two jabs to Jared and get back, well, now you're playing the game with him. And it's all about slowing down. The offense and allowing the rest of the defense to get on to get to that six on six because you know in defense the more people on the field like the better off you are right so a 2v2 is better than a 1v1 and 3v3 is better than 2v2 and ultimately like a six on six for defense takes up the most space it's the most advantageous style of defense you could play at an even number scenario so buying time helping adjacent playing with good form in that gray area so having hit the ball hit the man hedging well are so important. So it's more that technique and fundamentals than like actual scripted game plan. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you said about playing, you know, the gray area, you know, we talk a lot, a lot about that on offense, playing in the grays, uh, being able to be a player, uh, you know, be a threat. And to Jared Bernhardt's credit, that's one thing I think his footwork is phenomenal. He's able to put pressure on while still being a feeder um, and change speeds and manipulate those slides. So, you know, we're about to move on to the next clips here. Uh, but, you know, definitely he, he's a player that I think young players can really learn a lot from uh, as he's, you know, attacking and, you know, just working in early offense and regular offensive situations. Yeah, the last thing I'll say here on him is I just want his body language sells you here, right? Like if I'm a defender on the field, like I think he's going under for a second. So like you're kind of convinced, commits you, and that's what opens things up. So, you know, kudos to him on having the wherewithal and control to commit and then kind of pop out. Cool, let's get to the next clip here. Here we're gonna look at, Maryland did a really nice job of showing, and I'll explain that in a second, particularly to the secondary dodge right here. And that's really important. So I'm, I'm gonna loop that back through and just talk about the concept of showing to the secondary dodge and what the secondary dodge is really. So basically like a lot of offenses, it's hard to get, and we just saw Maryland do it. So, you know, a um, little different, but it's hard to get an opportunity on that first dodge a lot of times. So. You know, what offenses do is they dodge one side, slide, recover, because everybody's folded over. So Maryland gets to slide from the crease. They get it through X, they bang it to the back side. And now look, all defenders are on this side of the field, and this guy's got space right here. Now, this is called a secondary dodge. Like that's the initial dodge primary. Here's a secondary on the backside wing. Um, what is important here is that Maryland is really not going to have the time to establish a crease presence where this guy gets under to get to that slide in time. And so if this guy hits his top side, it becomes really problematic because he's about, you know, one step away from a shot or at least getting a, you know, a tough switch there. The Maryland defender does a great job forcing him back under. Now, 
the only help option underneath is this adjacent show concept. So by show, you know, I mean, when this guy is covering the man at X, he's going to clog up and show and hedge into this territory here. And if he has to, he can kind of clog up and fill underneath. And so right now, Brett McCarr does a great job of getting up, clogging that area. And the goalie does a great job just making the reel and getting out in that pass. But it's really important to understand as a defender, that's like kind of, we talked about those transition scenarios where you might not have time to establish a crease presence, just understanding, hey, this guy's a threat with the ball. My guy's at X, he's not a threat, right? In a perfect world, yeah, you can get out on him, but it's more important for Brett right now to help up and fill up this area where this guy can go to the goal and support his teammate and you know, worry about getting hung later. And it ends up working out great because this guy commits in. If this guy were to pop out wide, Brett could get back to his man. But on those secondary dodges, it's hard to get a new crease presence. So you have to be ready if you're the adjacent guy to assess the threat level of your guy. And if your guy's less dangerous than the ball carrier, you may have to help up adjacent to the ball carrier. Yeah, Matt, I think these are great points. And I think, again, you know, this has always been a really intriguing concept for you and I to break down. You know, we've looked at Maryland clips in the past. We've looked at Army Q's. And again, I think, you know, I want offensive players to see on this initial dodge, this initial up pick uh, in the high wing, uh, the difference of the attack when playing at X deep so he can be that transfer guy to fire it to the backside and maybe get a pick or maybe come back under. But again, the role shifts very quickly to that, to your point about on the secondary dodge when the slide has to come adjacent. Now he needs to be a forward outlet so that we can take advantage and swing it through X and get it to the backside because he does his job by drawing a slide. And now right. if you're going to throw it with your stick back to the inside, we still need to make sure that we're in a passing lane and we can't drift too far to that back pipe where the goalie can now pick off that pass. Yeah, and that's that's definitely a tricky one because what happens, you know, you know, the, the trade-off, right, is as this guy goes under, say he might say he does stay deep at X here and is an outlet. Well, essentially, if he's deep at X, you almost allow Maryland to get this free slide and recover back to him. Um, now what happens to a lot of defense, that's as if a defense has played perfectly. And what happens to a lot of defenses is he'll fly over. Some guy will still then kind of press out to X and leave the backside exposed with the transfer. So it does get tricky. Um, it, it's difficult to operate, but you're right. Like if he's going to drift back pipe and this guy crashes in, that kind of works for the defense there where he's Brett's able to, you know, slide up and you can kind of see on the backside, if the ball gets through Maryland's ready to rotate into it. Yeah. I think it's all great points. It's interesting now leading into this next one, right? Because we're going to look at um, one of the one of the downsides to this show concept is that you have potential to get hung or to, you know, allow for those free transfers through X if you have a team that can destroy you with a good X attackman or an offense that's really fluid and moving through X. So here we'll look at, you know, another example where wing dodge here, Maryland forces the ball down the wing looks very similar. They don't have a hot presence because the relationship here is, um, 43 Maycar here has to communicate with the crease. And right now he knows there's no crease presence or no crease presence low enough to get there. So he has to be willing to commit up. And as the ball tucks in, he decides to go from this show hedge position to a full commit. And it makes sense. He makes the play, gets there. The, now the um, Penn State Dodger maintains the ball on his stick. So now, right now we can see we're in a little bit of trouble where the ball gets through. And we have a two-on-one right here on the backside. What's really important is how Matt Rahill, number seven here, slow plays the pass to X. And what I mean there, right, is that whole idea of in, you know, uncertain scenario search, so transition or a recovery in a rotation, we have to be able to assess threats here. So as the ball goes to X, this guy's wide open. Ray Hill's job, he's next in line for that rotation. However, this player can't score and he knows he's about to leave a player that is wide open on the doorstep to score. So if he goes flying out full speed right here, it is an easy decision for the offense to dump it in. What he does is take a jab down and then he recovers back in the passing lane and gets back out to this man before he can catch and shoot. What that does is allows Makar here enough time to recover back across the crease so Maryland can force a pretty low angle shot right at GLE and collapse on it. Um, so it, the intuitive thing that a lot of guys would do right here is fly out to X, which doesn't seem wrong, but right here, this is such a smart play. And it, those little things go unnoticed, but that saves a goal right there by Ray Hill just slow playing that pass to a guy that can't score by protecting a guy that can score. Now, Matt, if you rewind that a bit, um, you know, before I kind of make my one point, if you're 54 here on the backside, 
if if seven does fly out to X in this situation, he's the next guy in the rotation, correct? That's correct. I think one thing that's interesting, and this is where too, you know, thinking about the players on the field, he's probably going to be a little less willing to mm -hmm. rotate and want to rotate given that he's covering, you know, number three, Mac O'Keefe, one of the best shooters off ball. Yeah. And I think that is to Penn State's advantage in this, you know, 2v1 type of scenario. And that's where as this pass gets off to X, you know, instead of always catching and throwing right away, when you understand that teams do want to slow play this, pushing that opposite side and attacking opposite and attacking that 2v1 can create, you know, that forward pass, make number seven commit, and then we have a shot. Even here, they do a good job of handling it, making him go back, and then, you know, with a little give and go, it's just a very tight space. You know, it's a tight right. space, it's a low angle. And I think, again, you know, by giving up the dip and dunk low angle over the shot from number 11 around the island, I think, again, you have to give up something if they, you know, end up rotating. And I think it's a good job of neutralizing that threat. Yeah, you know, that's actually a really good point about um, Mac O'Keefe up here. And I, I bet that is a part of it. Like, I bet Nick Grill right here, 54, is thinking, like, in his mind, in the scouting report, it's probably like, hey, don't get more than three or four yards away from that guy at any point. Um, but it's also just generally, even if that wasn't Mac O'Keefe, the more players involved in a rotation, the more difficult it is for the defense. And especially passes through X, a lot of times you – these aren't full rotations. They're a little, you tend to get more like three man rotation here where like um, make our shows shows up um, ball hits X Ray Hill. We, we would practice this. You slow play X and you give this guy enough time to recover. However, both those guys get cut so far wide that they don't have a chance to recover. And so it's probably not really on grills radar right now to crash down through this back pipe on the through X especially off Mac O'Keefe. Because by the way, even if he does, what's to stop this guy from skipping it to O'Keefe stepping into this spot if he rolls down? Yep. Um, so yeah, if you if you fully rotate 2X, you're opening a ton up above the cage, right? That's why sliding to X is so hard. Because if you slide to X, well, that guy's looking upfield at five guys that are looking downfield for a shot. So if you're rotating hard into X, well, now that guy has no pressure on him because you're, you're rotating down. He obviously had some time because you're rotating into him. And now the whole defense is rotating around us. So you got cutters and guys popping open the spots for easy step downs. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we rewind even, you know, back to the dodge when the slide's about to commit, you know, I think if you look at the spacing, we've been talking about this in terms of being a threat at X and how, you know, we're going to move and rotate. I think if you even rewind a little bit more, Matt, you know, number 11 does a nice job of starting to kind of, you know, show and flash to space while, yeah the player at X drifts. So they start to change their shape as an offensive player. If you can start to read that slide even quicker and as number 11 position yourself in a spot where, Hey, you know, that when that ball gets thrown forward, then you are going to already have a two V one because you know, the slide went. that's when you can really start to get yourself into spots off ball where maybe number 11 is telling his teammate at X, Hey, bring it, bring it. Instead of saying one more, when a guy's slow playing it, he can hit it, say, Hey, push the two V one, yeah. push the two V one. And then that communication and that anticipation really starts to create opportunities. And you can tell your teammate that before he's even getting the ball. Cause you're thinking one play ahead based on how the defense is starting to move. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. And the interesting thing is Maryland was doing, I, I, am, I don't know like exactly what their game plan was. I could guess from watching the game, but Maryland was helping a ton off, um, that show throughout the night and they really didn't get burned by it much. And this was probably, I mean, I might've missed one, but this is probably the closest they got to getting burned by it. And uh, Ray Hill kind of saved it by slow playing it. So you kind of wonder if Penn state could start to like, you know, think about, Hey, they're going to show here. And like what happens is if they don't, if this guy doesn't gets to this point and now steps away, right. He's got he's got a car drifting up rather than continue to come underneath where you're really getting crashed. If you can step away right now and maybe quick bang there, that's even a quicker opportunity to kind of get the ball through. But, you know, I, I yeah. thought I was impressed by that, by that slow play by Ray Hook. That's a really smart play in real time right there. 
And, and I think that's a great slide initially, because I just think again, like, you know, when you start getting underneath on that wing dodge and you try and get your stick back to the middle, you know, you're not able to really get out with your feet and throw yeah. it forward. So that guy is committed. And I think that's when, again, you're reading Dodgers posture, you by like, you know, he makes contact, he gets there, you know, the Dodgers actually lucky that the ball maintained in the stick. So I think it's a really well-timed slide. Unfortunate that he was able to, you know, kind of still handle it and get the ball out and move it forward. But, you know, that's where, again, like you can really start to tell if like, as a guy dodges underneath, is it in his outside hand? Is he just dodging for three steps, firing it forward to transfer it through X, or is he going to try and bounce, pump fake, and get back underneath? I think every dodger is different, and I think also you can start to notice trends within the offense in terms of how quickly they make those decisions. That's interesting, inside versus outside hand, right? Because you know, if that ball's in his outside hand, he can probably bang it through X more quickly, but he's also probably less of a threat to get a, a better angle shot underneath. So it looked like throughout the game, Penn State was kind of operating on those wings with that stick in their inside hand, kind of hoping to get back under. Um, so maybe that's, you know, part of the reason why this did work out so well for Maryland crashing up to those adjacent, um, adjacent positions. Yeah, and if you look at the clip before this, it's the same thing, get the stick back underneath, it's just right. a matter of if you're going to do, if you're going to do that, the player who's playing at X has to make sure that he doesn't drift too much and takes himself out of that passing yeah. lane. If he if the player at X is a couple more steps towards um, directly behind the cage, like where your mouse is pointed, right. then he does hit that pass off forward, and now we're attacking backside and trying to pick apart the recovery. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, no, it's interesting. Like the, these concepts are interesting because like Maryland executed this very well. I thought. Um, but it's funny because we watch, you know, we watch earlier in the season, we watch Denver go against Duke and even some other teams and Denver, um, does a great job working the ball through X and we watched Syracuse last year and they do a great job working the ball through, through X. And so teams that show up a lot and allow those quick transfers through X end up getting burned a little more on the backside. So it's, it's just interesting seeing how different offensive types, um, do well against this and, and some, don't and that's I think why it's so interesting kind of watching teams game plan and use their personnel and strategy against certain offenses I'll be interested to see you know if Maryland continues to use a strategy like this against other opponents or they thought it specifically worked well against the Penn State um, and interested to see if other teams kind of use it against Penn State too and how Penn State might adjust or um, or maybe they won't see those these types of looks um, but I think that makes it kind of fun watching these and and seeing how something like this can work for one team and then another team can probably tear you apart if you do it. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this. You know, it's March 2nd. You know, we're still early in the season. I'm fired up to see how these teams progress, and we'll keep staying tuned. Uh, Matt, awesome session. You know, love breaking this down with you and looking forward to next week. You too, man. Good stuff.